Hi guys, Jim and Dan here at Central Michigan Music, and today we're going to talk about the Personas RM32 AI. This is not that. This is a older style analog board. It's 32 channels. I think this one has how many outputs does this have for auxiliaries? Six. This has six auxiliaries, and you can use all six at a time. A lot of these boards, typically, if they're analog, will say they're six, but you can only use four at a time. You'll have to pre or post it. So basically, you know, only four monitor mixes. So if you're running anything in stereo, two mixes for ears, and that's really about it. And there's also four subgroups that you can use to group things together, like your percussion or vocals or whatever. And that's a typical analog board for you. If you want to say you have more than one band going on, when you switch bands, you have to physically go in here set your faders where you want them, make sure everything's EQ'd the way it needs to be. And what he means by bands is maybe you have running different groups in the night. So like band A has five pieces and uh, band B has, you know, ten people in it. Yeah, we have to physically go in and like make a list of, okay, this is where this guy's microphone was EQ'd at. We make it a note of it and jot it down and okay, that band's done. Get him off the stage and you got a guy back here turning buttons for five minutes and you got lag time on the stage or somebody's MCing and they got to tell 10 jokes that suck you just you know one of those things so so over the weekend we had the privilege of uh, running sound at cabin fever so for the Farwell high school band boosters and we Dan's crawling around the floor it's distracting me anyhow um, we used our new RM32 AI and as you can see, it's way smaller, easier to carry around than the analog board we just had here. This has 32 channels, just like the analog board did. Um, it has 16 separate auxiliary sends. So True auxiliary sends. A lot of these digital type things nowadays are saying that they have 16 auxiliaries, but what they don't tell you is you got to use two of them for your left and right. You got to use one of them if you're going to run a mono out. This has true 16 auxiliary outs, left, right, and mono. Really, really cool. Now one of the coolest things about this board, it can be totally controlled wirelessly from a Windows 8 touch computer, from an iPad. You can control it um, via Wi-Fi on a Mac. You can also control it over Ethernet to a computer or um, wirelessly through a Wi-Fi network and it does have a firewire port that you can hook right to it as well We use the firewire port to record the show and then we use other devices to run the sound It was really cool our first time out with this just to kind of give ourselves some you know leeway and uh, Some crutches if you will we left my MacBook Pro connected to it and like you said uh, My MacBook Pro connected right to it and we ran capture just to get everything Ran all 32 channels, recorded it right into capture. Um, he took his computer, which is a touch screen, and we really didn't have a front of house. It's kind of scary. Um, we basically ran the whole show from the stage. Um, he set his computer at the back front of house just as a crutch in case, you know, something kind of went haywire. But there was three of us that had iPads, and then, um, you know, one of us would kind of float and um, just, you know, to keep checking everything. And it just kept surprising us how. How much fun we actually had during the show. I've done several events to where you're stuck running sound and playing. And by the time you get to play, you're just so worn out and physically and mentally wiped that it's no fun, you know? Well, I had like four students that I was had the privilege of playing with during the show. And then I had a group, we had a group actually, that played in the night. And by the time it was time to play for us, they just had so much fun and we had energy and it was a really great time. So um, we're, we're never going back. Needless to say, um, the sound quality, we were listening to some of the stuff back through Capture. Capture is just basically, um, you arm your channels, everything goes into it, and then after the recording event, you're going to take Capture and dump it into Studio One, which is Personas' studio software, and you can just do amazing things production-wise, recording, um, you can, yeah, you guys need to study up on Personas' stuff. Watch a lot of their videos on YouTube and get acquainted with it because it's going to be more than the wave of the future. So Now, real quick, I want to talk about presets. We had probably, what, close to 30x 
We had 30 acts, one did cancel, so we did 29 different acts. So throughout the day we did relatively quick sound checks with everybody, um, set their monitors, we loaded a lot of presets. If it's a female vocal, we'd load a female vocal, and if they're playing a guitar, we'd load a guitar preset, and just kind of EQ'd everything, set their monitor levels, and save their preset. And come showtime, it was so valuable. It just took a matter of seconds to load their preset, and they were ready to go. Um, and really went off without a hitch. Doing this show for multiple years, what our MCs that have come back and, and done the show with us, they actually learned from us, you know, hey, we got to take some stage time and let these guys set up. And we were waiting for them this year. It was so cool. They kept kind of looking over like, need more. And we're like, get off the stage, man. We're done. We're ready. Let's go. Let's, go. Let's move this along. And so uh, one of the things that we talked about is next year we'll have to talk and say, hey, you know, <laughs> We don't need to um, spend a lot of time in between. It was just that simple. One of us could pull up the scene setting and go, we would say, we saved everybody as their own scene. And if you know digital boards, it, it makes it so much easier. It just, boom, everything's there. Whatever you sound checked and saved it as, it's ready to go. So the next act would come up, we'd pull them up, hit load, go, ready. And one of the interesting things that we learned is um, we, we would set a, what was like a template we called yeah. it cabin fever and basically the template started with the MC mics just always being on and we gave them two wireless microphones that had a really simple on off switch while well, standby as well but just simple all the way up was on all the way down was off we didn't have to share mics this year it was fortunate too but so the MC's always had their mic so they knew when it was time to go on they just flip it on hit the stage flip it off at the stage but anyway each one of our scenes had the MC's already on so there was no lag between loading different scenes, nothing cut out or quit. They were just always on. And then we just built the next scene and renamed it and saved it. It was in invaluable. Uh, another thing I want to touch on real quick is the workflow of the Universal Control. It's super user friendly. It took me about 30 minutes really to get the hang of using it. Um, EQ and stuff is a breeze. You can go on there for your EQs and just kind of draw what you want, um, which was really cool. Um, if, you know, during the show a few times, mics got placed in different spots and maybe get a little, started getting a little bit of feedback, it was really easy to just go in there and bring down a frequency. And it's one of the easiest shows I've ever helped run sound for. Yeah, and, and speaking of that, just... You know, doing things old school where we'd set up our 31 band equalizers and we put a condenser mic or something on stage and ring out a system. Y you all know how long that even takes. So basically having, I think we ran six different mixes for monitors this year, which we've never even done that many just because it's so much of a pain in the butt, you know. So this year we, we said, all right, we're going to do this. We, we brought some powered monitors along and the, the feeling of, of standing on stage turning each monitor on and off and setting its its own EQ and like Jim said drawing it on the iPad I was giddy from the get-go and to be able to hear and set the specs to that speaker no guesswork it was just amazing and then so it's got an on off feature with the equalizer so you can hear it with your preset and without your preset and you can go back and forth and just to hear the difference was like it was night and day and so as far as hooking up Setting up, we were in and done, set up probably hour, hour and a half. And teardown, you know, is always quicker than that. So, I mean, like I said, uh, to be able to enjoy the day. And by the time the person set stage, we had a lot of, of acts that were just like a vocal and a guitar. You know, that's pretty simple anyways. But by the time they started their song and ended their song, I mean, they didn't have to do it two or three times, which is, is normal with analog stuff. You have to, you know, get in there and... Oh wait, I still have a frequency that's you know freaking out. What is it? And you know a lot of that is learning curve. I know we were really good at, at running things analog because that's all we've had for years. But what was really cool is when we went to digital, you know, format like this, and it just made everything so much quicker. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that you know analog versus digital, and you know the sound quality is better, and you know there's there's still a lot of things. I'm convinced, and I like. It just made it so much easier and listening to things back the last couple days I don't really think that we've lost any quality and sound any any loss at all I mean we've everything rated at 48 
I'm I'm really impressed with it. So please though, uh, leave your comments and and share and let us know what you think. Other guys, tag that you've used. Let's. I want to hear all the tricks and the tips as well. Let's work together and you know, Personas has an amazing community of users. Um, you know, let us know in this video even if we missed anything or could have made it easier. We're not offended. We like that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just have one more thing I want to add real quick. For those of you already using the 32 AI or 24 with the faders, just the standard one, don't be afraid to try out the RM. Um, I have a feeling that I'm going to just be running the regular board with an iPad from now on and not even be touching the board itself. Right. We bought a 32 AI. We've installed four of them so far, and I still love the 32 AI. We use one in our church, and um, I was kind of hesitant to go to it because you lose that you know, physical quality of a board and um, yeah, I'm I'm not <laughs> I'm really happy with it. So And it was really nice having this up on stage where we use it as a snake or stage Basically, box, really. Yeah, yeah. We ran a couple snakes but then after the the fact we talked and said, well, why did we even run that snake? We could have put this there and everything just couples to it and then you're you're good to go. And the way we did it, we wanted it to be um uh, on its own network so we just bought a, a cheap router and um, set it up so this this is a dongle it's called a little wireless adapter and it talked right to the router and then to our devices so we didn't have to share internet from other places there were a few times to where um, I think the iPad was I think one of my settings I had it to go to sleep so what happened was when it went to sleep it for some reason defaulted to the place that we were at to their network so I lost connectivity. So after I got through that little learning curve and I set the iPad not to go to sleep, I didn't have any problems after that. Um, we had a little thing happen in Capture um, that like after the first half, my computer said that Capture unexpectedly quit. And so I said, oh, okay. So I just rebooted it. Now, mind you, my board was firewired, or my laptop, I'm sorry, was firewired to the board and running Capture at the same time just blew me away that it could handle that go Apple and um, so when it quit I'm thinking oh great maybe I'm running out of space or time blah 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 so I restarted it unfortunately I didn't arm everything so we got three hours of recording only an hour and a half took so learning curve for you guys out there to pay attention to that so alright I think that we'll wrap it up covers so. everything Make sure you check us out at 418 North McEwen Street, Claire, Michigan. Or give us a call at 989-424-6464. Check us out on YouTube and Facebook. Like and share, please. Have a great day. All right. See Thanks. ya. Bye, guys.